Hey everybody. Today we're going to talk about onboarding your team. So you've got a new recruit, now what? So I'll be the first person to admit that this is something new um, <clears throat> that I've implemented in the past couple of months. I wasn't doing this in my first year of business and looking back, I probably should have been, but we all learn, right? <laughs> so I'm doing it now. Um, and I have had response from people who have come back and you know, said, hey, this helps me so much. And it really made me uh, take a step back and be like, wow, you know, when you're first getting started, you're super confused probably. And there's a lot of information out there and the website can kind of be overwhelming and, oh, and all of this. So I try to put myself in their shoes and say, when you first get started, you know, I have a ton of things that like I assume that they know that they should be doing or that I want them to be doing, but how do they know they're supposed to be doing it if I don't tell them? So I try to think about ways of how I can get the information across to them without overwhelming them. I tried a few different things. I created this spreadsheet. I created this thing on Project Broadcast. I created, you know, all these different programs. And then I thought, actually, from my sponsor, Amanda, um, she really relies heavily on the first things first checklist. And I took a step back and I said, why reinvent the wheel when it's something that we all have right there at our fingertips, right? The first things first checklist is something everybody has. And the greatest thing about it is that you as a leader can look back and see if your downline has completed it yet. So if somebody comes to you and they ask a question and they're like, hey, how do you set up a party or how do you enter an order in the workstation? You can go back and say, have you looked at your first things first checklist? I see here on the reporting tab that it doesn't look like it's completed yet. And so that's really nice, you know, um, for you to know who is completing those things so that you can check in with them and make sure that they are. The first things first checklist was created by Sensi and has everything that they should need to get them started. Okay. Um, so point them there. I wanted to go a little bit further than that and make them feel special, make them be happy and excited that they joined the bomb squad and, you know, what what makes joining my team cool, you know, because there's so many different options out there. So for me, what I ended up landing on through all of this was creating something like this. It's a one sheet piece of paper that I send out to my new recruits now when I get them. And it's super basic. I created this on Canva. If you guys don't use Canva yet, I highly suggest looking into it. It just says, welcome to the bomb squad, new consultant training. Oh, hey, that's me with my information. So they've got my contact information and then I did all QR codes because QR codes are life the first things first checklist can be found right here so if they open up their phone and they just scan it they can find it right there right here is a video about how to make your Facebook group um, so if they uh, scan that on their phone it's gonna take them to a training video that I've made but if you don't have a training video made up you can link it to somebody else's YouTube video um, and then down here are the two Facebook pages that I would like them to focus on joining which is our personal team page and then our larger uh, group page which is our uh, scented family tree obviously there's a lot of other Facebook groups out there but sometimes again when you add people to 15 groups when they get started it can be really overwhelming and then at the bottom, it says, want more inspiration, follow my faves here. And I've put QR codes to the YouTube page of all of our favorite leaders that you guys have actually probably seen and heard a lot from already in this program. Jennifer Anderson, um, you know, Rachel Penn, Stacey Berenger, Chloe Cox, all of them, because there's so much great contact context on their um, pages that they can go and they can really, you know, immerse themselves into that and learn a lot that will help them get started. So this is the first thing. This is most important. If I didn't send anything else, then this would, this would be it. But again, you notice it's taking them back to the first things first checklist because that's really one, one of the things I really want them to focus on. Then in addition to that, I try to think about when I was a consultant, I was first getting started, what was something that would have been nice to have? Um, maybe that would have helped you know, me get started sooner or maybe, um, you know, just to ease the process or to speed things along. When somebody signs up, they're immediately, they're going to get a kit of some kind. So they're either going to get the host exclusive kit or they're going to get the full kit depending on which option they choose. But what can, what do you have at your, at your fingertips as a seasoned consultant that you can send them that might make them excited um, or make their launch party more successful? So for me, I go back to samples. I'm a huge person about samples. I believe in them heavily. And I think that's something that we have that we can offer to people that Bath and Body Works doesn't, you know, they don't send out samples or Walmart, Vax, they're not sending out samples, but we have samples. We have them at our fingertips that we can send out. So let's give a couple that we all have made up already 
to our brand new consultants to help them get started. So the first thing I send out is um, stuff, in, you know, a little goodie bag uh, from the scent in the warmer of the month. So the first thing you're gonna see, and I just put it, these little bags I actually think I got from the Dollar Tree. And it's a wax bar of the scent of the month and then some felt samples. They don't need anything else except for this to make these samples, to make up the wax samples. I mean, I guess I do need some baggies so I could put in some baggies if I want to, you know, maybe do 25 felt samples and then 25 of the little baggies to put them in. Totally personalize it, make it your own. Um, but with this wax bar, and a warmer at home but if even if they don't have a warmer they could do a you know the thing over the stove you know there's some other options on how they can get it done i personally use a chocolate melter but you get what i'm saying they don't need a, to go out and buy a bunch of other stuff to get samples made and that's important we want them in the habit of doing that right off the bat so i send them this and then i'll also put in a sheet of the scent of the month scented stickers because this is another great option for them to use in the meantime. And then I'm going to include a scent of the month flyer just so they know what the scent of the month is. And I may even print a little thing off and tag it to it that just says, you know, um, you know, this is the scent and the warmer of the month. We have a different one um, every month. I'll be totally honest. I had no idea what the scent and the warmer of the month was when I get start got started. And I was like, what? what is, where did this come? We got a new release. I was so confused on it until Amanda was like, oh, yeah, we get we get this every month. And I'm like, oh, God, I didn't pick up on that, you know? So I think a lot of times we've been doing this for so long, we all like assume that we all, you know, that it's easy or that, you know, I know at least when I have new teamies join, I'm like, oh, yeah, they'll get it. And then I'm like, oh, wait, this is a lot of info. So just try to make it easy on them. And how can you can explain these types of things? They may not know that on the first of each month, we're going to have a new scent and a new warmer that's going to come out with a bunch of new goodies that are going to be, you know, associated with it on sale, but that also that they can get it the next month early. They don't know about that. So maybe consider printing off something, um, about the scent and warmer of the month subscription that, that you can get. Um, other samples that you have lying around that aren't labeled obviously with your information. So if you've got some already made up wax, this is Luna, my favorite. Um, I, you know, pop these in a little baggie and say, hey, here's some extra wax I have made up. Pop these in a bag. You know, some people even take it the extra step and they make up labels for their new consultant as like a welcome gift to them. That's too extra for me, and that's a lot because I'm extra. Um, <laughs> but for me, I'm like, I, my big thing is I want to make something so it's getting out the door as fast as possible. And if it's too involved, then, you know, then I'm not going to do it. These are all things that I can make up ahead of time. Um, and then, you know, these little samples of baggies that might have bath soak in it or... Um, you know, washer whiffs inside um, that you can pop in and, you know, say, hey, label these and send these out to a VIP person. And then I'm going to put a um, join brochure in there because it just, you know, has all the information about joining. They've already joined at this point, so they should know this, but it's good because it's got the comp compensation plan just right there spelled out for them. And then, yeah, if you guys have other samples that are laying around, like this is some counter clean and this is some pet spray, you know, some of the products that they may not be using right off the bat, you know, look at what the welcome kit is. If they did the $59 or the $99 kit, look and see what's inside that kit and say, oh, they don't get pet spray in this. Let me pop in a little sample of my pet spray that I have since I want them to use that product. You know, try to think outside the box and just think about if they got this, what is going to make their business more successful right off the bat when they're getting started? How can you help them do that? Um, and then I have more old testers than anybody should ever have in um, one location. I can't, and I've only been doing this for two years, so I can't, can't imagine how that adds up over time. Um, you know, but a lot of them we keep season after season. So pineapple, uh, coconut, vanilla, uh, we've got that in a handful of products. Now and Zen, Go Go Mango, I've got 15 of those laying around it seems like so I put it a little bit a few extra testers um, in a little box with just a little welcome paper okay I stack everything up inside of this box this box I got from Amazon it's just a perfect cute little sized box it fits everything inside of it um, I will show you I'm gonna load it up just like this there you go throw some confetti on top fold that bad boy up pop it in there 
put it in a poly mailer and mail it out. It's not a requirement that you use boxes. You can use bags if you want to send out a goodie bag. Um, it's also not a requirement that you send out a goodie bag. You're, uh, a lot of people, just like I said, use the first things first checklist or they make something else or they're sending them something or whatever it is. The point of this video is to say you have to be onboarding them in some way. You can't just say, hey, welcome to my team, good luck. You at this point are a leader and you have a responsibility to provide stewardship to them. Once you become a director, it's actually a requirement that you do. Um, and let's be honest, guys, you guys put in all that hard work to recruit them and to, you know, welcome, you know, or to have them come. Now you want to make sure that you're welcoming them on their journey. Remember, this is their business. This isn't just a club or a sisterhood or a brotherhood or whatever you want to call it. This is their business that they're getting started. So think about that. You know, what can you do to help them get started to make their beginning of their journey easier, more successful, make them more motivated, get them more excited. Um, you know, some people will pop in some candy and different things like that. Whatever it is, personalize it. It's up to you. You personalize this. I just want you to make something, to do something, to send them something. If you're not into a literal package of mailing it out, consider using something like Visly. A project broadcast. It's a text campaign. You know, there's a lot of people out there. They don't mail anything. They just get a text campaign going. And on the first day, they get a welcome. And on the fifth day, they get this. And on the 10th day, they say, hey, you know, make sure you're checking into shooting star, whatever it is. You, we want you to do something. So that's your homework for tonight, okay? We want you to develop a system of some kind. Again, another system. Um, we want you to develop a system of some kind for onboarding. It's completely up to you but you have to develop a system of some kind. What are you going to do when you get new recruits to get them started? Lay it out in a complete plan, make a system out of it, one that you're going to actually stick to, and then pop it in the comments below, and then that'll be your homework for tonight. It is due by Sunday uh, at the end of this week. Um, this is your last week, guys, so this will be the last time I believe that you guys are hearing from me. Um, we're so proud of you, and we're so excited about all of the things that you guys have done, and really, especially for those of you who have stuck with this program, because we know um, it's been a lot of work, but we're also seeing how much it's paying off. So, um, we're proud of you. Okay. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.